Hello, good morning and welcome back to On The Hook. I'm out today on my 17 foot boat on the south coast of Cornwall and I'm going to try for a really late season shark session. I was catching blue sharks into the end of October last year so I thought I'd give it a go again. Tell you what, it's been a glorious morning. I'm stunning coloured clouds. As you can see, the sun is just cracking the horizon. It's been a really clear night last night. You can see the, the moon's still out. Yeah, this this swell. I hope when we get offshore, this swell's not going to be too bad. I will explain everything, the rigs, the tackle, everything, all the methods as we're doing it. The first order of the year, though, because we have got a long way to go, we're going right offshore today, is we need to find some bait. Ideal hook baits are mackerel, whiting, any small fish like that. Yeah. So just wish me luck. I've come all the way out now. I managed to find a couple of baits. I only got half a dozen mackerel and scat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend half an hour now. Oh. Little red gurnard. I'm going to spend half an hour now trying to catch some more whitey. Because I would like to have a dozen hook baits before we start. Now I'm just going to fish. These are just baited mackerel feathers. I've used one of the smaller mackerel, sliced it up into pieces and put it on the feathers. The reason why the reason why I'm going to try and catch some more bait before I put the shark rods out is because quite often what you can have is if you're bringing a whiting up from the bottom and there's some sharks around the boat, they'll attack it. So I've, I've run one bait out to the back, you can see on the rod there. And I'm going to try and get out a few more whiting. We have got a little bit more motion today. But um, that shouldn't stop us. At the moment we've got wind against tide. When we've got wind and tide together, it should calm down quite a bit. I am in 96 meters of water. And we're currently drifting at 0.7 knots. At the moment, the wind's holding us back against the tide. When the tide changes, we'll have wind and tide together. You can use gurnards as shark bait. I just don't, I just don't like doing it. <laughs> When they're small like that as well, I just think they're too cute. You get a big one, you get like a two pounder. Well, a two pound red or a, anything bigger than two pound for a tub. And they are delicious eating fish. All I'm fishing here is it's my 20 to 30 and this is a squadron two. And I've got a Finnor Marquesa 20. Just a, a very good all round setup. The moment I'm fishing on the bottom, when I've caught some more bait, this will be one of the shark rods. Now that we've got a few more baits, one of the fundamentals of having a good sharking session relies on your chub. Now, I use a homemade chub. Some people prefer frozen, some people prefer fresh. I make all mine up in batches and then freeze it down. And all I'll do is I uh, put it inside of a laundry sack. Now, I would say that you're better off putting a laundry sack into a bucket and then tipping it out into the bucket so you don't get chum all over your boat. All it is, it's chopped up fish and bran and fish oil. And this creates like a long, a long trail of scent, a long train of, of, of chum slick. Which any sharks swimming around, they'll they'll find it and follow it to your bait. And I'll just suspend it from one of the cleats at the back of the boat. One of the reasons I like to use frozen chum is just because as it thaws out, I feel it slowly releases it. When you've got a bit of a choppy day like this and it's washing about, the bag can quickly get washed out by the waves slamming into it and stirring it all up. Right, now my shark traces. My blue shark traces come in two parts, a trace body and a hook length. It is 480 pound wire ending in a 12-0 Cox and Roll Mutsu circle with the barb crushed. The reason why I crush the barb is because 99.9% .9 of shark fishing inside the UK is catch and release. So most of these sharks, most of these sharks, unless there's a reason for me to bring them on board, like for instance, if the, if the hook is a little bit difficult to get out or if they've got some, some other lost fishing gear in them, like long line hooks or mackerel feathers or... Sometimes you, they're, they're scavengers as well as predators. So sometimes they do pick up other hooks. 
if I find one of those I might bring it aboard to take all the other bits of hooks out of it otherwise you'll just see me t-bar them off on the side of the boat I'll get one of the rods all rigged up and I'll show you it just before I send it out I'll start from the pointy end all I've done is I've flappered off one of the scad that I caught earlier there is my hook length we have a trace body that incorporates a lead sorry I'm getting thrown around all over the place a trace body that incorporates a lead connected to a leader with a sliding float on I really enjoy this setup this is my fun setup for fishing for blue sharks it's a conflict offshore casting tuna rod and it's 20 I think it's 20 to 120 yeah and for the reel I've got a spin fisher live liner six and a half thousand the reason why I prefer a live liner for this is because of the bait runner function there so what it does is it allows me to set it so that drag can be released so a fish can pick it up and as soon as I wind the handle it's back onto full drag no messing about tightening the drag up okay, all I'll do is I'll just run this bait out until it sets back sets back down on the slick now as the chum's released from the bag it will sink so uh, nearer to the boat it's shallow and the further away it gets the deeper it gets so the further floats want to be set deeper than the, than the nearer floats varying depths throughout the day depending where I think the sharks are going to be anywhere from up high like 10 foot from the surface all the way down to 60 80 maybe even 100 foot all I'm using for fishing on the bottom is just a sliding ledger and a hook length of about two and a half feet or 40 pound mono reason being is because you do get spur dogs out here so if you use anything lighter they do just snip it off just like like that and I've got a 3 or specimen extra and I'm just baiting it with a little bit of mackerel now because we are because we're so deep and because we're drifting at 1.6 knots I am using like 12 ounces of lead might have to go to 14 ounces yeah just dropping all the way at the bottom the, the bottom area is it's mixed ground so just drop into just off the bottom either touch the bottom and if you find it soft you can drag it and if you find it's a little bit rocky you might have to suspend it a couple of feet off the bottom yeah, I'm just trying to pick up a couple of extra whiting shark fishing days like this can be <laughs> can be all or nothing you can fish all day for that one good fish or you could get a pack of them moving and you could get 10 fish in 10 minutes you don't want to be scrabbling around for bait especially not if you get sharks on the boats because you can't bring the bait to the boat without sharks in it. I don't know if you can see like the, the glassy area that's been caused at the back you can see it's a little bit rough and a little bit rough and there's like a glassy like a greasy patch that's that's the fish oil from the chum There's a lovely size waiting. There you go. Just taken on. Let go. Three O with a bit of mackerel strip. If we don't use him for bait, I'll take him on for a fry. Shark right here in front of the boat. shark on the other rod and it's picked the float up and it hasn't tripped it. Oh, 
I know I've got you. That was two sharks turned up at the same time. One took the furthest float, and one was right next to the boat. It didn't even take any drag off this. I just saw that the furthest float, the balloon, was coming towards me. A nice flow. Yeah, it is a nice blue of about, I put it about 60, 70 pound. See if I can get you to have a look at it. That's a good 70 pound fish that. Yep, just slipped the hook at the side of the boat. Well, where there's one there'll be more. I'm just checking this bait before I sent it out. This is one of this is the bait on the deep rod. We've had a shark had hold of this look. Them slash marks in that. Yeah, we've got another shark that's had hold of this. So yeah, they're there. We might have one playing with this. been playing with it for about five minutes like every now and again it'll just pull the float under and just click a couple of bits of drag off there's every chance it's just a little one playing with it got it oh no it's pulled off I think it's maybe had the bait away now. We'll give her a second and see if it comes back, but there's definitely a shark there. Let's get another bait ready just in case. Oh, no. oh, he's checking it this time. He just needed that little bit longer just to 
just to make his mind up, didn't he? Now this guy definitely took his time. I thought there was a fish with us for a while. But it just... <laughs> it was just been really finicky. Still a nice fish, still a good 40 pound blue. pound in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring him aboard and measure him bring him aboard measure him and put tagging him there we go as you can see on this side here I put I put a Noah tagging it there. 58 inches long, 23 inches girth. There she goes. Right, I haven't worked out how heavy that was, but it was. Tag number 413327. I'll work it out now, I'll review. But yeah, that, that was a comfortable size to be able to cradle it in the water and lift it out. You start dragging them over the gunnel, you start hurting them. Because sharks, they haven't got any bones. They haven't got any bones, they haven't got a rib cage. They're all cartilage and they're used to the support of the water, supporting the vital organs. So unless you can pick them up and cradle them out like what I did there, you're better off leaving them in the water. That shark works out at 38 pound. <laughs> that was about right when I said 40 pounds. Yeah, to calculate their weight, it's their girth in inches times their girth in inches times their total length in inches. So girth times girth times length, and then share that by 800. That gives you the rough weight. Another one. They're being terribly finicky with them. All I'm doing here is because they're being really finicky. I'm hoping that by moving the bait, by reeling it in and dropping it back, the shark thinks it's, it's going to escape. So it triggers it into taking it. Come on, where are you? Give me a couple of minutes and then I'll bring it in and check the bait. Because if it's a little tiny one, it might have just bitten half the bait off. Really little sharks sometimes can't get the whole bait in their mouth. So they just bite all the meat off and leave the head in the hook.
I gave it another 10 minutes, and no more bites, so I brought it in to check the bait. And it's just been ravaged, doesn't it? Look, you can see where the, the teeth marks are. So that there, that's that's a small shark. You can see how bite. Its mouth would only be about that big, so it can't fit the whole bait in its mouth at once. Now we've we've drifted we've drifted a good distance. We've drifted about five miles, and. I want to start heading back because otherwise we'll get caught out when it's wind against tide again. This is interesting and worth mentioning. The other rod was the deep rod. Now this shallow rod hasn't had a touch the entire time. And when I brought it in, see these lumps here look? That is lumps of algae. just coated all the line and the wire so at some layer at some at some shallow layer probably between like 10 and 20 meters there is an awful lot of plankton and I didn't get a single knock or a single bite this is the same bait it's been out the entire time it's just a scad fillet it's completely untouched so that layer of the water that layer of the sea that's full of that weed, there's no sharks in it. So that tells you that when you've got an awful lot of plankton in the water, the sharks for some reason don't like it. So there'll be some days when you'll come out, some days you'll come out and it'll be everywhere. You know then straight away you're going to have a hard day. I don't know if it gets in the gills or if it cuts down the, the oxygen content of the water or what. Yeah. When there's a lot of this algae in the water, they don't like it. Look how much is correct and collected just on that. Yeah, the uh, the spinning rod setups that I use, the spin fisher and a my lighter one. Sometimes you'll get fish, sometimes you'll get sharks, and they'll come right to the boat. They'll come right in along the surface. And I usually like to keep a little rod just down underneath the boat. Keep it to hand in case the shark shows up next to the boat. Uh, this one's covered it in as well. I like to keep a really light spinning rod next to the boat because sometimes, more often than not, the sharks that come to the boat, the sharks that come right to the boat, are the little tiny ones. Break all these rigs down and get back in shore because we've got a long way to go. They're better fishermen than I am. <laughs>